Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Jesus. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Lord, I love you, Lord. Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Talabagashaka. Lord, I love you. Lord. Let your living waters flow by my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and check of every situation. The power of God is in this place. All my cash and body. Let your living waters let your living waters flow let your holy spirit of every situation My cares and bodies. All my cares and bodies. All my cares and bodies unto you. All my cares and bodies. Whatever the trouble is, roll it on him. All my cares and bodies unto you. Let's sing, Father, 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 Jesus, Father, is your Father. Call him Father. Is your father? Is your father? father. Call him Jesus. That's his name above all names. Name above all names, G. Call him Jesus. Maleko sopra gadavatash. Now let's say spirit. Lakashaka Spirit Holy Spirit Holy Spirit Holy Spirit Holy Spirit Engala Pakashana Morakati Lasa I 
We love you, mighty God. Glorify yourself in our life. I know when you will arise. The world will know that my redeemer leave it. I know when you will arise. The world will know that my redeemer leave it. I know my redeemer leave it. I know from me yeah. I know when he will arise the world will know that my redeemer leave it I know my redeemer leave it I know you are not far from me yeah. I know when you will arise in my marriage, in my family. I know when you will arise. I know when you will arise. Will arise. The world will know that my redeemer I know when you will arise. The world will know my redeemer Blessed be your name. We worship you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Clap those hands one more time and take your seat. Every gathering to God is a gathering for change. No gathering unto God. No gathering unto God is a gathering for fun. It's a gathering for change. For they go from strength to strength as they appear before him in Zion. And hear me, everyone under the sound of my voice god is going to invade your life in all things <laughs> the bible says in genesis 24 verse 1 that god blessed abraham in all things in first corinthians 3 21 he said all things are yours in, in the bible says in luke 14 17 all things are now ready Somebody say all things. In First John two twenty seven, this anointing you have received teaches you all things. In Third John one verse two, I wish above all things. In Romans eight twenty eight, all things work together for good to them that love God. Colossians one twenty says is able to reconcile all things. Philippians 4.13, Paul says, I can do all through Christ that strengthened me. In 1 Timothy 6.17, he says, He has given us all things richly to enjoy. Oh. In 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, the Bible says that you be sufficient in all things. I make a declaration as I begin. Even the angles and aspects of your life that you were not a visitation, oh. my God will invade it. Amen. Amen. My God will invade it. Amen. 
Take your seat. John chapter 4. We'll do verse 28 and 29. John 4, 28 and 29. Bring down the echo on this mic a bit. John 4, 28 and 29. Have you found it? Are you there? Or you are looking at the screen? Okay. The woman then left our water pot and went away into the city and said to the men to the men to the men come see a man there are men and there is a man come see a man which taught me all things I ever did. Is this not the Christ? Man of impact. So let's flow with the topic. Man of impact. Being a man of impact is being a man amongst men. Being a man of impact is being a man that leaves his footprints is indelible marks is is in irreversible mark being a man of impact is endorsing divinity on your humanity the place where we just read the bible said jesus had a 20 verse discussion with a woman and when jesus was done with that woman the bible says that the woman ran out to men she met men and said to them there is a man there are men but there is a man the bible never said that she said to the world or she said to the people she said to the man come see a man that is impact impact is when men like you can feel your presence they can feel your value that is impact impact is being a man amongst men impact is is making a mark that generates news and commands announcement making a mark that generates news and commands announcement impact is providing relevant results that relegates regulation impact is providing relevant results that relegates regulation impact is leaving your signature in the document of human history living a life that is not an explanation but an exclamation impact is when you live a life that is not an echo but is a voice am i talking to somebody now when you make impact impact is when your work announces you it was not the it was not jesus who was announcing himself it was the woman by reason of the evidence that is produced someone under the sound of my voice when the power of god hits this place in the next couple of minutes god is about to release upon your life a grace that will announce you after now you will not be hidden i say you will not be hidden if you are in business you shall be announced if you are a politician you shall be announced whatever you do you shall be announced if your amen is louder you are the one i'm talking about Listen, take your seat. God from time yeah. had a plan for man when the world began. God had a plan. And that was why when the world began, God created a platform that was before Adam. Before what? Adam was not the first man to be created. Hello? Adam was not the first man to be created. Before. <laughs> listen now, listen. Adam, hold on. The book of Genesis is not the first book. The book of Job is actually the first book. The reason Bible is written the way it's written is for understanding. 
so that you follow sequence that's how the bible is written bible was not written in verses and chapter it is human being that put verse put chapter for order for structure are you following me it's like a building there has to be a city room there has to be a bedroom there has to be that all of that is for structure in the book of job there before adam there was a, a generation and that generation was a generation satan was practically in charge before that generation of job there was actually another generation listen the generation before the generation of job he was called lucifer in the heavens but he had rebelled in the generation of job and that was why the bible said when the sons of god came satan came he was not a serpent there it was satan he came and when god casted satan down because of that rebellion that is when you saw in revelation chapter 12 verse 9 he says satan said the earth war to the earth satan has been cast down because of the war to the earth god had to evolve by creating adam war was on the earth that is why the bible says in genesis 1 2 there was darkness upon the face of the earth the earth was without form and void because satan was cast down so and god now said let there be light so adam was not the first man but adam was the first man created in the image of god are you following i'm talking about hold on genesis 1 hold on genesis 1 verse 1 genesis 1 verse 1 and god what in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth verse 2 and the earth was without form and void between verse 1 and verse 2 something happened how can you create the heaven and the earth what god creates will not be without form and void god cannot create something that has no form and no void this was the blueprint in verse 1 in between 1 and 2 was when satan was cast down when he was cast down the earth was now without form and void and god now said i will create something you know one time i sat down and i was asking myself i was feeling for god I was never was feeling for God. I was just imagining him. Satan he created is now a contest with man. And you think you raised up somebody who backstabbed you, you are worried. God lost angels. I sat down and I began to imagine how does the father feel that this one that I formed, this one I created. Now, you cannot, you cannot downplay Satan. No. These were angels made by God. What did Satan tell them? What did he tell them? That they left. What was that thing he told them? These were people that saw God. These were people that stood the presence of God. These were angels. These were body present that stood before the Almighty. So what did the devil tell them? If you think you have lost anything and you are crying and weeping, God lost angels, yet he's still God. So no matter what you've lost, no matter what has been taken from you, you can rise again. You can bounce back again. Am I talking to somebody right now? One of the problems we have as men is inability to move. Inability to move forward. We build a camp around errors. We build a camp around mistakes. We build a camp around bad news. When God has raised you as a man of impact, no matter what you have lost, shake yourself and bounce back again. The righteous man falleth and rises up again. Rejoice not over me, O my enemies. For if I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, God will be my life. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. I don't want to go into too many of that. Sit down. Some of you are scratching your head already. I don't want to go into I don't want to go into all that. I just want I was trying to explain the plan, the blueprint and the original agenda of God. God this time around there was a problem the story of this woman and Jesus was a story of two nations that encounter by the well it wasn't individuals that were talking it was nations the Samaritans and the Jews had no dealing it was nation the problem people have in the house of God is inability to seize the moment whenever you sit down in God's presence it's not an individual sitting down it's a nation 
whenever a message is going on and you are being given instructions from God's presence, from the very house of God, it's not an individual that has been spoken to, it is a nation. And the Bible says, the woman by that encounter, there were certain things she saw, and she said to the man, Come and see Emma. Being a man of impact is being a pointer to your generation. A woman said, A man to, to the man, Come and see a man. <laughs> mm. Oh. Oh, until you can make a mark on an individual, you can't make a mark on the nation. Stop trying to take over your work. First, take over your wife. You have not conquered your home, you can't conquer your world. I'm going to be exposing some things tomorrow on marriage. I'm going to be handing marriage tomorrow. If you have not conquered, Jesus said. You know, you see, many of us are sparring with big dreams. We have big dreams of taking over the world, taking over territories, and your home is in shambles. Just an individual impact. That woman came for water. When Jesus was done with her, she abandoned her water pot. Impact. Impact is just opposing passion on people till you change their appetite towards God. It's just opposing passion on men until you change their appetite towards God. The woman said, This time I don't want water anymore. I am hungry for what you carry. I am hungry for what is upon your life. Yet this and yet this well until you are ready for this kind of life. Impact. What did she see? This lady was the one walking away from men. Six men. She had walked away, not five. Jesus said, you have had five. You had had five. You have five. And the one you have now. So number what? Six. You have had five. And the one you have now. So you have had five husbands. You must say, I have no husband. And guess what Jesus said? You said the truth. You said the truth. He never said she was lying. He said, for now, you have agreed finally. You have had five. You have believed in five. You have supported five. You thought five would stand with you. You thought five had value in your life. But the one now is not. Until you get to that point, where you understand that man is not your source. Man. That lady, at the sixth time, the sixth man she was with, she had concluded that my problem is not with these people. There is something bigger I need. That was when an encounter came. And what did she see? That she would look at Jesus and say to the people, A man! Come and see! A man! To men, come and see! A man! Jesus sat that with that woman and had an intelligent conversation. 20 verses from verse 8 to verse 28. 20 verses of conversation. And the conversation was healthy, impeccable, purified. So what did she see that she didn't see in other men? Being a man of impact is being an uncommon man amongst men. What did she see in other men? Being a man of impact is becoming a reference point. God says a city set upon a hill. God calls you a city, don't die a village. God said a city set upon a hill cannot be hidden. What did she see? A man of impact, number one, is a man of morality. Morality. For the first time, she saw a man who engaged a conversation and a discussion with outstanding morality every man that she had come across before that time all they were talking about is marrying her all they were talking about is taking her home for the first time she saw a man hold a healthy conversation filled with morality filled with soundness of emotion a man of impact is a man of morality is a man of outstanding morality the highest test on masculinity is morality the highest test of masculinity is morality she saw a man do you know when god wanted to send moses forth to go and bring his people out of egypt the first thing god did was to send him somewhere to the house of jethro hello 
and Jethro had seven daughters. The one that is not fair is dark. The one that is not tall is short. You must see the one you like out of seven. If it was one, you say she's too short. If it was two, you say they are too tall. Out of seven, Moses, you must see the one you like. I want to test your morality. Before I send you to lead two million people, I want to test your morality. There are many men today, they don't need to test them. Their house girl is it? Their sex girl is in trouble. If they, they have become, uh, they harass anything. Because of you, there's no female in your house. Your wife has brought everybody in your house is a man. Everybody, there's no house girl. You have never had one. Because once you, it's time for morality, you drop your sanity. Seven daughters in a house. Seven daughters. Have we not seen situation of people who live in a house with a man and a wife, and the man impregnates the house help? You know situations like that. Have we not seen situation people live in a house and the house help is in trouble? You know situations like that. Even situations where the man b b brings down the respect and the honor of the wife for the wife, and the house help and the madam are now in competition on who owns the husband. Bankruptcy of morality. God will put you at that point. There is a level you cannot climb until you are morally sound. You may have money, but there's a level. You may have contact, but there's a spiritual level. Hear me? God told me something very strange. He said to me, He said, Son, there is a there is a, a, a dimension of grace that morality commands. It is called uncommon protection. Uncommon protection. Uncommon protection. Seven daughters. God was taken testing his moral level come see a man who could talk with me for the first time i'm seeing a man who's not telling me how i look he's not telling me about my exteriors he's telling me about my destination come see a man morality am i talking to somebody morality is the capacity to break the wings of a warish woman break the wings there are women that will tell you they can get any man they want. Morality is ability to look at them in the face and say, I have a destiny. Morality is ability to look at them in the face to say, I have a destiny. You can, you can, you can incapacitate others, but not my destiny. Am I talking to somebody now? Morality is the ability to look at and break the wings of a warish woman. Am I talking to somebody? The Bible says that by means of a warish woman, a man is reduced to a muscle of bread. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 26. By means, there are many men who are walking about. They are not men. They have become bread. He said, For by means of a warish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt the precious life. There are some of you men looking at me now. Do you know, as a man, can we talk man to man? Can we talk man to man? How many of you men know that we are in a generation where men don't chase women anymore? Women now chase men. A am I correct? How many of you know we are in a generation where men don't need to approach women now? Women now approach men. That's what the Bible said. They are daughters. We hunt for a precious life. That anytime you see a woman chasing you, she's not chasing, she's hunting for something precious. She because that is an upside down arrangement. It means there is something you carry that she's looking for. Am I talking to somebody here? A man amongst men, a man of impact is a man of outstanding morality. You can keep committing sin, but there is a sin you commit, your life is extincted. Let's be child of God. Samson slept with everybody until Samson met Delilah. Delilah is not a temptation. Delilah is a terminator. When you meet Delilah, that is the end of your destiny. Delilah is not the regular Philistine woman. Delilah is on an assignment. Delilah's office is to take your glory. Am I talking to somebody now? A man of impact is a man of morality. People are yeah, yeah. nobody can stay around you and survive. Nobody. Nobody. Morality. Come see a man to make impact. You must understand the place <laughs> of morality. Am I talking here? Your morality is your identity. Your morality is your identity. Your morality. <laughs> Morality is ability, ability, ability to turn an immoral person into a worker in God's vineyard. A woman that had had five husbands was a, was a mistress of immorality. 
Jesus turned out to an evangelist. How many people have come to your office with the wrong intention and by reason of your encounter with them, they change their intention? Take your seat. By reason of your encounter, they change their intention. Say, this is why I came. One day, I had a secretary. It was said for like three weeks or a month. She came and dropped a letter on my table. That was when I still had... I've had two female secretaries. One of them is married to one of our pastors now. And another one. That was where I stopped having female secretaries. One of them came to my office. She dropped her paper. And I said, where are you going? What's the matter? He said, I resign. Resign where? Why? He said, I just resign. I said, resign where? And she was so on point. You don't tell her what to do. You don't tell her what to do. Sir, you have people coming to see you between five and six. I told them after service you need to rest, so I fix it for Monday. You don't tell her what to do. Am I talking to somebody here? Ah, you must be extremely careful of people with too much capacity. Too much capacity. When people are prim and proper, you have to be careful. Look at them with the second eye. Everything. And she dropped the letter. She said, where are you going? You are good. Is it your salary? Then the salary was 18,000. You know, those days. I said, we'll make it 20. We'll make it 25. He said, sir, let me go. I said, why? And she looked at me. She said, I am a witch. <laughs> eh? He said, I didn't come to work. I, I'm sent here. He said, I was, we checked our crystal ball and the rest, and they sent me to you. He said, but it's not working, so they said I should go. I said, go, where, how? He said, do you know some of the times I come, it's like I'm picking documents, and I pick documents, I'm turning my body, I'm doing that. I said, I can't remember. What's not your intention cannot get your attention. I said, I can't remember. He said, sometimes when I, I said, I can't remember. He said, they were just saying I should do that. I said, so, you are a witch. Now, my biggest problem is, she was so close, I couldn't see it. Mama knows what I'm talking about. No. Beret, you know Beret? Mama knows what I'm talking about. No hearing, nothing. As when I saw that posture, all the time, my, my mentality was, this one is a child of God. He said, I want to go. I can't sleep. I'm restless. Whenever I enter your office, I leave my body on fire. I said, is that why you want to leave the office? He said, yes. I said, no, 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 don't go yet. I suck you in the name of the Father. I suck you in the name of the Son. I suck you in the name of the Holy Ghost. You are fired. The highest test is the test of your morality. Your wife can't leave you with anybody. Before she travel, everybody must travel first. Before your wife travels, the house must be empty. Everybody, I'm not joking. Everybody must travel. Cook, travel. Cleaner, travel. Laundry woman, travel. Even get man's wife, travel. Your wife will say, eh, Aboki, your wife will go Sokoto. He said, No, madam, my wife stays. He said, No, 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 your wife go Sokoto. Take transport, go Sokoto. <laughs> and this is a two day trip. Everybody is discharged for a two day trip. Discharged because you are a hunter. For the first time, speak to yourself. Speak to yourself. Speak to yourself. Look at infirmities and disease everywhere. That is why AIDS is not an attack, it's an acquisition. HIV is a property. AIDS acquired. Immune. They feel acquired. You acquired it. <laughs> it's not an affliction, it's a property. You acquired. Am I communicating here? Am I talking here? Mm. Mm. Ooh, so what? This is a 
you have to you have to speak to your mind that's why jesus was trying to let us know when he starts from in matthew 5 28 whosoever shall look at the woman lustfully that is where it starts arrest your mind arrest your mind that is where it begins the man of impact is a man of morality number two is a man of mentality a man of mentality look at jesus engaging this woman in scriptures look at you engaging her in the world they began to talk about jacob's well they began to talk about the place of worship and jesus took her through the document of history a man of mentality as you know is, is in four dimensions number one is a man of scriptures 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 hear me and hear me well job said the other day in job 23 verse 12 i have esteemed thy word than my necessary food in matthew 24 and verse 35 heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away in isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8 the grass may wither the flower may but the word of God abideth forever the Bible tells me in Hebrews 4 verse 12 the word of God is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and of the marrows and it's a discerner of the thought and the intents of the heart in Acts chapter 19 verse 20 so grew mightily the word of God and prevailed in Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 I commend you to God and the word of his grace that is able to build you and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified am I talking to somebody here they sent some soldiers to arrest Jesus when they saw Jesus the word from his mouth arrested them so in John chapter 7 and verse 46 they said never a man speak like this there is power in the word of God the Bible says in Acts 17 verse 11 the barrier Christian we are more noble than the Christians in Thessalonica they received the word of God with all readiness of heart and they went back to search if this is yes so five years in the church ten years in the church Bible you don't know you are a spiritual illiterate spiritual Ill scripturally bankrupt a spiritual illiterate Hebrews 1 verse 3 who being the express image of his person he said Bible said the brightness of his glory he upholds all things by the word of his power Allah Gadasha Hebrews 4 from verse 1 and 2 let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it for the gospel was preached unto us like unto them but did not profit them nothing because they did not mix it with faith hear me a man of mentality Jesus engaged for she said come and see a man this man is a man of impact he has left his signature on the document of human history impact is when you tattoo yourself in the life of people impact is living living a destiny trademark in the life of an enemy impact is when you when you you put an emblem when you put your your, your signature on the documents of human history a man of scripture a man of mentality a man of mentality a man mighty in scriptures the strength of a herbalist is directly proportional to how many incantation he knows how many incantation when you are releasing scriptures you are releasing incantation satan came to jesus said it is written jesus said it is written it is written does not does not respond to forget leave that matter it is written response to it is written it doesn't respond to forget it, it written response to it is written can i surprise you jesus fasted 40 days fast satan didn't come with prayer point he came with scriptural point so the height of spirituality is not fasting and prayer it is scripture it is addiction to scripture in the midst of fasting satan came and said it is written i know you can pray 
I know you can fast. I know you have been in the wilderness. But <laughs> do you know it is written? I know. He didn't know that why Jesus was busy. The Bible only told us he was praying and fasting. The Bible didn't tell us he was studying. That was coded. It was hidden. And I'm sure the reason they hid that part is because of Lucifer. Because if he had known that he was busy, not just praying and fasting, he was also busy studying it is written. He would have come to another dimension. So God only showed us that he was praying, he was fasting. He didn't show us that he was engaging in it is written. So when Satan came, it is written. Jesus said, it is written. Satan said, it is written. Jesus said, it is written. The battle of spirituality is a battle of scriptures. Da, da, da. Tika, 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 know your history jesus took her to memory lane man can i talk to you can i talk to you jesus took her to memory lane you see our fathers one of the problems we have today in the church is that people don't know their history nothing happening to you now is new it has happened to your father before Ask your mother questions. If they are dead, ask your auntie. Whatever is happening to you now has happened to somebody in the family. It is not strange. It has happened before. Are you going through a level of struggle? Ask what happened to your father at your age. It has happened before. Are you going through a challenge? Ask what happened to somebody before you. It has happened before. There was a man in Genesis 38. His name was Judah. Judah was a man. By reason of what he did, there was a spirit of premature death upon Judah. That spirit was in his history. He he killed his first son called Onan. He killed the other son called Er. And that spirit was chasing people in the family. David came from the lineage of Judah. As soon as David killed Goliath, spirit of death was chasing him through Saul because it must follow pattern of Judah. David came from that lineage of Judah. So that spirit was following. That spirit of premature death. David escaped it. But guess what? His son Absalom died premature. Adonijah died premature. David was losing children because of that spirit. Do you know our Lord and Master Jesus come from the lineage of Judah? He died at 33 and a half years. Do you know somebody called Judas Iscariot was from the lineage of Judah? He went to hang himself. He committed suicide just to fulfill that yoke of premature death. One day, the Bible says in scripture, he said Moses looked at the tribe of Reuben. The tribe of Reuben was a useless tribe. There was no priest. There was no prophet. There was no lawgiver. There was no Levite. Useless tribe. And Moses was worried. Why is this tribe like this and he checked the book of the chronicles and he found out that in Genesis 49 and verse 3 there was a proclamation against Reuben Reuben thou art my firstborn excellency of dignity excellency of power he said oh can we do a census let me see who I can assign a position to and when they did the census then in Israel they don't count women because of battle they only count men when they did the census the tribe of Reuben women physical family woman third family woman and he asked, what happened to the men? And they said to Moses, anytime we go to battle, all the men of Reuben are decimated. If we lose 1,000 men, all of them are from Reuben. Because there was a pattern in the family of Reuben. So Moses screamed out in Deuteronomy 33 verse 6. He said, let Reuben live and not die. Let not his men be few. Am I communicating? In Luke 22, from verse 31, Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Luke 22, from verse 31, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. Verse 32, he said, but when you are converted, straighten your brethren. In other words, Simon, this attack on you is not because of you, it's because of your brethren. This attack on you is not because of you. The enemy came for you so that your sister, your brother, the people in your family line can become handicapped. I am telling you the truth. There are families today. What is happening to the man now in his home? It happened to his father. It happened to his mother. It happened to his uncle. It happened to his elder brother. He's repeating. Know your history so you can know how to tackle. Am I talking to somebody here? You must get to that point when you have an understanding of the powers that have operated before you were born. The power. You are not just living in this world. There is a place you lived before you came to this world. It is called your mother's womb. That was the world you lived before you came to this world.
God. But some people was happening. He said to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, thou art bound. Because in the day when thou was born, thy never was not caught. What does that mean? When you were born, you were not disconnected from altars. When you were born, you were not disconnected from the powers that stopped others in your family. When thou was born, thy never was not caught. I come to cut that never. I came to cut that never. Anything that has connected you to evil pattern in the bloodline, today I cut it off. Today I cut it off. Take your seat. Mentality. He saw a woman who had married five husbands and turned that to an evangelist. Mentality is capacity to see the rawness in people and turn it into a material. I didn't say raw material. Rawness. Anything raw is not, is not yet a material. So I don't know where that English raw material came from. If it is raw, it's not yet a material. It becomes a material when it's processed. To see the rawness in people and turn it to a material. How many people as a man have you picked and they are standing, they are solid by reason of the encounter with you? That's what makes you a man. Not a building. You are a man when you have made men. Not a house. I remember in those days, we will hear fathers say to their children, I may have only one building in the village, but I trained all of you. I took you through school. I made you graduates. All of you today, you are standing. And that was what they called their wealth. But we are now in an abnormal generation when the man has 20 buildings and five useless children. The man has 15 buildings and three drunkards as children. People no more invest. Invest! Biologically. For children. Family wise. Am I communicating? My first daughter is in the university. When I open an account for her, I make sure she gets a lot. I get a lot. <clears throat> yeah, she gets a lot. I get a lot. Yeah, there are lots I will see, and that requires a phone call. To say, I, I just got to greet you. There's something I saw. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah? You can't grow up and be useless. When they are coming to a minister, I tell the same treatment they give others, give them. Everyone goes through Riaza, let them go through Riaza. There's no pastor's child in the church. There's a pastor's children at home. No pastor's child. Everybody's a member. No pastor's child in the church. Am I communicating here? How many people are standing through you? You see Christian men that are wicked. Wicked people. You stand up a young man as an apprentice for five years. When it's getting to four years, you are looking for fault so that you don't say to him. And you are praying. When you make somebody cry to God in tears because of you. There are many people who are crying to God and there are many people crying against them. You are crying to God and there are people crying against you. That become a landlord all your tenants are in trouble 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 am i talking to somebody here anybody you don't like quick notice you don't care about that you, you give quick notice more than nigerian borrows money but so rampant with that and 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 people are crying the rawness jesus saw her I said, this one is going to become something. Today, I may not have silver and gold, but I have men. My joy in life. My greatest investment is men. When I do the things I do, I'm not stupid. In months, we spent millions, my wife and I, from our pockets, into the lives of people. And I say to her, when we make these people, they will make us. Not everyone may remember you. Not everyone. Everyone who forgets you is not good enough to remember you. Yeah. Yeah. But God will pick.
plant people. A man of mentality is a man that invests in people. The greatest investment of life in life is investing in lives. Am I communicating? A man of impact is number one, a man of morality. Number two, man of what? Of what? Number three, a man of maturity. Maturity. Maturity is the ability to understand that you don't need everybody. When Jesus was to engage this woman, he did it alone. There is a... Oh, can I talk to you? There is a high point you will come to in life when you will face destiny alone. Maturity is ability to tackle issues alone. Jesus made sure none of the disciples were around because at that level it was a decision between him and destiny. He could enter Samaria, but he can pick a material from Samaria and turn the old Samaria around. He said, I must go through Samaria. I was confused. How can you say you are going through Samaria the next you went to an individual? It is God affecting a man to affect a nation. I must go through Samaria, but this woman is my door to pass into. Don't we, don't we have joy that we serve a God that does not check our qualification before giving us manifestation? Don't we have joy that we serve a God that does not call us because we are qualified? He qualifies us when he calls us. Are we not excited that we serve a God? If God were to check qualifications and capacity, there are many of us today in marriage, many of us today in business that would not be there. If thou wouldest mark iniquity, who can stand? Maturity is ability to know that you don't need everybody. There are people in your life that must go if you must encounter destiny. Am I communicating here? Maturity is ability to, to separate the men from the boys. The disciples left. There's a realm you have to in God that even if you don't send people away, they will live on their own. There's a realm you get to in God that even if because you are no more speaking the same language. The Bible said they left. The disciples left. You are not speaking the same language. Am I talking to somebody here? You are, they have to go. You are not speaking the same language. They have to go. They have to go. He that followeth after vain persons. Proverbs 28, 19. He that <laughs> followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. Till the land shall have plenty of bread, but he that followeth after vain person. Proverbs 13, verse 20. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. A companion of fools, a fool, a fool, she shall be destroyed. In Genesis 39, verse 5, the Bible says, And God blessed the Egyptian for Joseph's sake. There are people that enter your life, their presence in your life commands it, hastening the fulfillment of prophecy. Genesis 26, 24, God said to Isaac, I will bless you for Abraham, your father's sake. I wish I was communicating here. I wish I was communicating. Jesus sent, made sure the disciples leave. Can I shock you? Maturity is the ability to understand that not everybody is matured. Maturity! Listen to me. To survive in human relations, learn to take people the way they are. Don't take them the way you want them to be. There are some people you have to love unconditionally because many men don't have sense. Just love them unconditionally. Don't love them because they qualify for it. I'm talking about men of maturity. Men of maturity. Am I communicating here? Number four, before I pray, men of impact are men of might. Might. Might is what makes men mighty. Even in your service to God, you need might. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy might. 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 Might is spiritual stamina that produces physical energy. Might, might, might is just opposing the strength of the inner man outwardly. Might, might, 
Might is transferring content into container. Might is transferring, taking it from the inner man, transferring content into container. Child of God, might is what it takes to do exploit. Might, we are looking for a generation. Do you know today my heart is bleeding? Because the church of God is now teaching people how to be comfortable. The church of God is now teaching people how to be relaxed. They let me, when Jesus was teaching disciples, he was, check Jesus, he never preached success. He never preached lifting. He was teaching them how to overcome persecution. Teaching them how to be ready for persecution. How to be ready for war. How to be ready. The church of God is now teaching people how to be comfortable. How to be relaxed. Not to take territories. Not to stand persecution. Not to stand tribulation. Am I speaking to somebody here? The church of God. I read a story about some young men who went to go minister. And the only way for them to enter into a particular territory was for them to sell themselves as slaves. They can only enter as slaves. If they don't enter as slaves, they can't enter that, that city. But they need to preach the gospel. And when you enter as slave, you are a slave till you die. You are a slave for life. So they sold themselves and they were given money. And they handed the money and gave it to charity. And they entered the city. We die here for the gospel. We die here. Where's that generation of people? Men of might. Men that they are serving God. You are hitting them, giving them blows. And they are not stopping. Persecution come right, left and center. They are not stopping. They burn the bridge behind them. They have said to themselves, either we serve God or nothing else. Persecute me. Tribulation. I am, I am, I am, I am dead to my emotions. I am dead to my will. Men of might. Men that their own wives will persecute them and mock their God, yet they stand firm. Men that their wives look at them in the face and say, you are a failure. And the man knows, he knows a way to succeed outside God, but he refused to allow his wife blackmail him to the devil. He stands firm and says, only God or I serve nothing else. 20 years, no child. 15 years, no child. And they are recommending for you another wife. You say, no, I've made the decision to be with this one. If he did it for Abraham, he can do it for me. Men of might. Men that have come to a point and they say, I will never bow my knees to bow. No matter the pressure, no matter the temptation, I will never. Men of might! Look at the persistence Jesus spent. His heart was to win the soul. God is saying there's a generation of people. Heaven is about to empower Power. Heaven is about to empower to take over territories. Am I talking to somebody right now? A young man went to preach in South Africa. As he went to South Africa to preach, the wife gave him a golden jug. And that golden jug was full of milk because he had ulcer. He was to stay for one week. The wife gave him a golden jug with milk that can take him for one week. Take your seat. That can take him for one week. And this man went as he would preach a little. When he feel the ulcer pains, he would run. He would take milk and continue in the battlefield. And he was preaching. Can I say this to you? There is no priest without infirmity. There is no man without a challenge. He said, I will not heal you Paul my grace is sufficient for you there are battles God will put in your life to remind you that you are still a man there are battles God will put in your life to remind you that you should still pray he said Paul I will not heal you my grace is sufficient for you and the Bible says uh, that Paul went through that pain and that ridicule do you know that this man will take that milk and he will continue preaching take your city will take that milk and he will continue preaching one time he entered the city and he saw the king of that city and the king looked at him and was listening to his gospel the king was eyeing that jog looking at the jog and there was just little milk left because he had overstayed more than a week in that place he was thinking of preaching and rushing home when they told them there is a mission field let's go and minister to a king in his palace and when they got there the king was looking at the jog looking at the jog looking at the jog and he said to the man I want your Jesus and I want your jog and there was milk in the jog he said take my staff and give me your jog there was milk in the jug giving him that milk that jug means giving him that milk when the ulcer pain comes how will he cope that is what it takes something must leave you for this god something must come out of you it can be your life it can be everything the man took the jug and he gave to the king the king gave him a staff the man said what can i do with staff if ulcer comes staff cannot do anything and the man went outside the pain came but he remembered he has given the man the jug and giving the man Christ. The pain came. He was rolling on the ground with a staff in his hand, almost dying, and he shouted, I want milk! I want milk! I want milk! 
while he was shouting he saw milk in gallons people were bringing milk in buckets and he said what is going on he took a sip of the milk and was strong and he saw milk all in front of him they say why all this milk they say you have this stuff in your hand with that stuff anything you say is what they will give to you sometimes you must understand when it appears you are losing all for jesus you are gaining a staff there is something you are gaining there's something that jesus in your life brings to you there's something that jesus gives to you that money cannot buy situations of life may hit you back and front don't compromise your faith be up on your feet everybody be up on your feet be up on your feet thank you lord oh hallelujah there are people under the sound of my voice god needs to heal you morally god needs to heal you morally there are people god needs to heal you mentally you have to cry to heaven mm. hold on hold on have you read the story of mary do you get something from the story of Mary? Mary carried a pregnancy that was not a product of a biological copulation. In other words, she did not enjoy the pleasure of intercourse to carry the pregnancy of glory. She was denied the pleasure of intercourse because if it's by intercourse, the pregnancy will be a normal child. But if you are denied the pleasure of bodily enjoyment, God denied him the bodily pleasure of intercourse to carry glory. There are so many who want both of them. They want the pleasure of intercourse and yet carry the Messiah. God said, make your choice. If your pregnancy, your vision for your generation will be outstanding, then you must be denied the pleasure of intercourse. If you must affect your world, make your choice. To carry the master, no intercourse. Or to carry normal destiny, going through the motions of intercourse. God is bringing men that will transit from the realm of pleasure. If all your testimony is still centered around pleasure, then you have not been a man of impact. Being a man of impact is when people can take over mission feed. A man can sit down and he say, I don't have a shop yet, but there is a village. Today, people throw away their idols. I sponsored the crusade. There's a village. I sponsored missionary for evangelism. My pastor said there's a village in there to go and preach. As a pastor, give me the crusade cost. Even if I cannot build a house in Abuja, a house in Portacot, I will build a house in heaven. There will be treasures in heaven. Souls must be saved. Men must turn to Christ. That is the, that is the proof. A man who says, a, in the kingdom, of, a man who says a multi-millionaire, he has not sponsored one crusade. He's a multi-millionaire. He has not, there's, there's no kingdom investment tied to his name. None. There are missionaries. A man and his wife passed through this place and they were crying. The young man is the son of a king. The wife is the son of a multi-billionaire. They met themselves in school. And the place of prayer, God told them that he has called them to be missionaries. And they went to a village without light. Both parents disowned them. They went to a village and God told them that if he tarries to come, they should be there for 27 years. And the man said, that is the whole of my life. I will give birth to children there. God said, stay there. And when we sit there in our comfort, our heart begins to bleed for the missing ones. The lost ones who are dying in the mission field. And somebody sits down, is thinking of changing his car from Camry to Benz. He's thinking of changing his house from duplex to mansion. When the reality of vanity, vanity, when it dawns on you, you will start investing in the kingdom. When it dawns on you. I used to preach real estate. I used to preach investment. Until I, 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 Hurricane Katrina hit America. And I saw skyscrapers crumbling. Saw banks buried in seconds, split seconds. Hurricane Katrina, my mentality changed. And somebody asked me, Come and do a business talk. I said, I will spoil the place for you. 
I will spoil it. I will spoil it for you. He said, what I said? Because I've discovered in as much as those things are good, the investment that lasts is when you lay up treasures above. Treasures above. Treasures above. The church has taught us. Uh, we have, they have wired our mentality to be comfortable. To be comfortable. Every teaching is surrounded around comfort. When there's persecution, they call it attack. Persecution, they say pray against it. There are some you must go through. You must go through. Married for, for five years, six years without a child, God wants you to pass through it. So that when the child comes, because anything you go through becomes your message. It is your mess that becomes your message. Check every man who has become a healing evangelist. They were first afflicted with sickness. A man like Kenneth Hagin at 17 was at the point of death. Almost dying. Almost dying. A man like a bishop in Aosa was left. The, the father told the mother, throw him outside. Sick and infirmed. Your mess is always your message. Whenever God wants to give you a message, he has to first mess you up. Make you go through a mess. And make it obvious. Why will you wait for two days after Lazarus was sick? How can you hear somebody sick and you wait till the person dies? He wants the mess to become a message. Lazarus was sick. He didn't go. Because when he brought back the woman who died, Jarius' daughter, they say it's a lie. She wasn't dead. If you say she's dead, where's the medical report? This one didn't die. She was in coma. When Jesus Christ brought back that young boy, the widow of Nain, brought the son back, they said, no, this one fainted. It was fainting. Who is the doctor that tested it? So the testimonies were not outstanding. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he decided to wait back. When he heard that Lazarus died, he waited. He heard that Lazarus was buried. When somebody is buried, you don't need a doctor to confirm that he's dead. He made sure Lazarus was dead and buried. Then he came. He said, let me see who we argue this one. Sometimes when God Almighty appears to be waiting, not wasting, he appears to be waiting and your problems are aggravating, it's because God wants to make you a spectacle. Do you know if Jesus, if Jesus has healed, had healed Lazarus when he was sick, it would not have been a revival. No, it would not have, but he waited. And the Bible says in chapter 12 that many people that came to, the, to see Jesus also came to see Lazarus. Lazarus was no more a testimony, was a testimonial. A testimony can be told, a testimonial is seen. People heard it this time, they came to see it. Can I prophesy on you? When God shall be through with you, you will not just have a testimony, you will be a testimonial. Amen. Amen. Tasakrata. Now, I want to pray. I want us to pray. Anytime Samson, study your Bible, is about to carry out a major feat, an outstanding manifestation, and that tearing the lion, pulling the gate, the Bible will say, and the Spirit came mightily upon him. The Spirit came mightily upon him. Mightily. That's might. Might. Make you tireless. Fervent. Romans 12, 11. Not slothful in business. But fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. Might, uncommon strength. Might to take over territories. Might to conquer the world of business. Might to conquer the world of politics. Might. Let the spirit of might fall upon me. Oh Lord, let the spirit of might. I, I see chains breaking. Amen. Amen. I see chains breaking. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes, sir. That brother raising his hand like this. The one doing the hand. Come. No, the one on blue. Blue. Hallelujah. Where's your wife? Can I pray with you? Yes, sir. I was seeing a chain falling from your hand. Amen. Amen. Do you know Andrew? 
Yes, sir. That's my name, sir. Andrew. Yes, sir. Come this way. Thank you. What the Lord shall do for you. Now, it's not just you. It's also I'm speaking to the family line from where your wife came from. What the Lord shall do for you and do for our family. It shall become a season where records are going to be set straight. Yeah. Amen. Look at me. I'm seeing your wife and I'm seeing a lady. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I'm seeing your wife and I'm seeing a woman behind your wife. Okay, sir. I'm seeing your wife standing and I'm seeing a lady behind your wife. Okay, I don't think this is a sister or whatever it is. But I'm seeing a lady standing behind her that practically follows her everywhere in the spirit realm. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, oh. I decree oh, that every foreign body who is ready to pray oh. the power of might the power of might when when oh lada hasha oh kaprade when might might is the ability to take territories cheaply to take territories cheaply are you ready Say in the name of Jesus. I can in the name of Jesus. As I pray, power of might fall upon me. The power of might fall upon me. Open your mouth and fire. I'm going to repeat that prayer. I'm not sure you understood it. Now, if you are sick in body, this is your night. If you have any form of health challenge, Hallelujah. tonight is your night. Hallelujah. If you have any form of health challenge, you cannot, you cannot be in this place and not be healed. Who is pious? Who is pious? Who is pious? I see the chains. I see the chains. Mm. Yes. I saw a letter P. Beyond pious, I saw a letter P. I saw a letter P. H. I. Philip. Pious Philip. Yes, sir. Pious Philip. Yes, sir. That's your name. Yes, sir. Stand here. I see the chains. Listen. Taking territories. Taking territories is when you conquer, you conquer dimensions cheaply. You conquer realms. You traffic in realms naturally. A man enters the world of business and he takes over. This is a business people have been doing for 20 years. He just entered. There are some testimonies I hear people give me. I beg them not to share it. I, they say why well, I say because this generation is not matured for this kind of testimony. I don't know. If you travel abroad, you may understand this or you may not. You travel abroad. Someone was testifying. I got abroad and he got his green card in 10 days. Those who live in America can tell you that's not normal. That's not how. That's might. Might. Might might start where strength stops. Might start where degree, expertise, experience, connection, where it stops, might starts. 
might. So spirit of mind, it, it takes something extraordinary. This is not a wishful thinking. Is somebody following me? You are not wishing. Something has to come on you. You see, it's only the church that leave themselves to chance. Yeah. Those who are in competition against you, either in business, in politics, in any facet of life, they spend time to prepare themselves. I heard a story about a politician in, in the West. They caught him in a burial ground, naked. You may have heard the story. A politician. I think it was House of Assembly. House of Rep. It should be House of Assembly, one of them. Eh? House of Rep. As House of Rep. He was going to bury the ground. <laughs> to be seen it, he will be sleeping with spirits. House of Rep. This guy, they caught him pants down. In the bed carrying rituals. Just imagine his opponent is at home sleeping. And somebody is telling me, why do you pray the way you pray? Yeah. A young man who got born again, I was telling me when he was in the world, he said he visited 300 herbalists. And I asked him, the whole herbalist in Nigeria, are they up to 300? He said, sir, only a do and death are more than that. I said, ah! He said, there's no way he doesn't know. And I said, tell me, say sometimes they'll tell them to go to the graveyard. He should lie down like this morning to night. He should... Whether a snake is crossing his face, whether he, he should not touch, just stay straight. Rain, sun. He said, Many times you see scorpions coming, you have to stay. It's a risk. You die, you die. <laughs> and Christians, we pray. Those are the kind of things you are up against. You wonder, you wonder the more you pray, the more you are going down. The more you pray, the more things are hard. Those that are fighting, you are taking risk. You are paying price. Oh, I see the chains. I see the chains falling. Listen, it doesn't take God time to turn things around. It takes him encounter. If you think it takes God time, how come in one day the destiny of Job change? One day. Overnight. So it doesn't take God time. It takes him encounter. How come the destiny of Jacob changed in one night? Genesis 28 verse 12. He saw angels ascending and descending. A ladder reached up to heaven. Just one day, every man who became outstanding in this world, his encounter was tied to a day. Was tied to a day. It was tied to a day. One idea can make a transgenerational financial movement. One idea. One idea given to you by Elohim. When the ancient of day sits on your mind, the one that covered himself with light as with a garment, when he sits on your mind, one divine idea, might. There's going to be a download of might. Yeah. Say so in the name of Jesus. Yeah. As we pray, some shall feel it like fire. Oh. Some shall feel it like electricity. A release of might. Say so in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Power of might. Power of might. To take territories. To take territories. Fall upon my life. Fall upon my life. Open your mouth and turn into prayer. <laughs> Jesus, 
Lift your hands. Uh -huh. Chains will fall off. Amen. Chains will fall off. Amen. Wherever you are, chains are going to fall off. Amen. Financial limitation is a chain. Struggle without achievement is a chain. Darkness Amen. instead of light. Amen. Is a chain. Uh -huh. That spirit of cobwebs uh -huh. that covers your face uh -huh. is a chain. The chains are going to fall off. Amen. Lift your hands, say Jesus. 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 Let the chains fall off. Let the, Let the chains, chains fall. fall. Jesus. Jesus. Let the chains fall off. Let the, Let the chains, chains fall. fall. Spirit of God, Spirit of God, let the chains fall off. 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 Hey man. Hey man. Wow. There are there are men, there are individuals under the sound of my voice. I saw number 17. I saw 17 keys in my hand. I don't know what these keys represent, but 17 persons, Father, I transfer. Hey man. Upon your son. Right now. Hey. Right now. Right now. Right now, 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 one, two, three, right now, one, two, three, four, help them, take, right now, right now, right now, right now, look at that, look at that, take, look at that, bring them to me, I want to pray for them, help them in front here, take, right now, 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 right now. Amen. Right here you are, right here you are. Oh. Keys of destiny, keys of power, Amen. keys of progress, Amen. keys of increase. Amen. Amen. Keys of power. Amen. Keys of destiny. Amen. Keys of progress. Amen. Bring them here, Osha. Bring them, bring them. Oh. There are six people here. Oh. God is saying, What fought your father? What fought your father? that is currently fighting you as the anointing comes on you now that power is broken Amen. look at that look at that at the count of five Ow. let the anointing move through this place set that young man free oh. set that brother free one Amen. two Amen. three Amen. four Amen. five Amen. ten Amen. Amen. Jesus Amen. Jesus Amen. Jesus. Every spirit that is not of God in the life of anyone here, every spirit evil altars spiritual wife how 
whatever you ate in the dream out. all the demonic attacks out. struggle without achievement out. spirit of delay out. family strong man out. I break your power Amen. 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 lose them and let them go Amen. your money that is being held I release it to you Amen. your money that is being held I release it to you Amen. Somebody's, somebody has goods that we are seized. Somebody has goods. They are seized. These are goods that are imported. But they are seized. They are stopped. The goods are held. Your goods are held. They intercepted them. If you are the person, run forward. I want to pray for you. They intercepted what belongs to you. And they are going to release it now. Amen. if you are the one run forward don't waste my time the intercepted what belongs to you was intercepted they, they collect this top what belongs to you please if you are the person come stand let me pray with you Hallelujah. if you are seeking just stand there put your hand on your head sir put your hand on your head if you are seeking body put your left hand where you need a miracle and raise your right hand who is Allah who is Allah I don't know if it's Allah or Lamide or La something. They said in Allah. If that's your name, come here. That's your name or that's your, your family name. Please come. I want to pray for you. Is you? Adi Allah. Come, 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 come. Hallelujah. Now, put your left hand where you need a healing. Put your left hand. Thank you, Lord. If you are paralyzed, you will walk. Amen. If you are blind, you will see. Amen. If you have a disease, it will go. Amen. I see a family, a chain family, a family with a chain. All of them are diabetic. There's diabetes that runs through your family. The spirit of diabetes running through your family. Just a, a, a lineage. I cause it to die today. Amen. I exercise dominion over blindness, deafness, dumbness, paralysis, <laughs> stroke, huh? elephantiasis. Heart problem, kidney problem, How? cancer, How? liver problem, How? heart enlargement, How? problem with your rib. How? Come out in the name of Jesus. Hey! <laughs> right where you are Ow. anything in your body called sickness come out right now Amen. someone used to be when you were younger you were a sports person football athletic but you you had a broken bone you sprained your bone and that pain has been on that spot since you were a boy grew up with you to becoming a man right where you are the Lord say you are healed right now. Amen. Someone here, you have a child called Destiny. On this altar, you have a child called Destiny. Is it you? Stand up. Hallelujah. Huh? First son. Your Thank what? You. First son. Your first son. Lift your hands. Thank you. The Lord is opening his mind. Amen. Touch. Amen. We command that affliction. Let it disappear. Amen. Come out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be made whole. Amen. Be made whole. Amen. Be made whole. Amen. Someone left the wife in the hospital to come here. Someone left the wife in the hospital to come here. Your wife is critically sick. It's a bad condition. But God wants to heal her. If, you are the, if I say something concerning you, don't waste my time. Just come out. Your wife is critically ill. 
she is critically ill i'm going to count to two if you are not here i'll move on your wife is critically ill if you are the one come here come faster sir Hallelujah. thank you lord look at me right now as we are talking here we extend the healing power to your wife Amen. right now right now she is free in the name of jesus Amen. as i call the name of jesus whatever the challenge is in your body wow. it will begin to go Amen. in the name of jesus 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 Amen. in the name You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. Begin to wave your hands and just give God the glory. Whatever sickness was there is gone. Whatever you could not do, begin to do it. Check where that sickness was. You are made whole. Help, 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 help. Lose him and let him go. Lose him and let him go. 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 Oh, tada, tada, dash. Thank you, Lord. So, prekete, kete. Where are you from, sir? Where do you live? Abuja. I want to see you. I want to see you. Eh? I want to see you. I want to see you. Maybe tomorrow or something. Hmm? War. You know what they call war? War. Your house is war. Your home is war. I want to see you. You know they call war. They don't know who is the husband or who is the wife. Yes, sir. Stand up. I want to see you later. Mm. It's not what I can say now. Okay. Tomorrow, look. Let him come. I want to talk with you. We are going to spend time tomorrow evening. The prophetic. Tomorrow morning we are going to be on mission marriage. Now, wherever you are, something has happened to you. Examine yourself and begin to give God the glory. Uh -huh. Bianule, 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 every healing here is permanent you came to this place tonight and there was a challenge in your body but you just notice now you feel a difference you feel a difference i want to lay my hands on you that healing you have received now is permanent something just happened to you now you feel a difference in your body now let me see your hand up if you're that category you felt something happen to you i i, I mean you felt those of you in front can go those who are, who are healed and you, if you're among them here you are healed you can stay back you felt something happen just now to you just now you felt something can i see your hand you felt wow what a crowd what a crowd what a crowd what a crowd come 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 let them come let them come what a crowd clap those hands for the lord clap those hands can we take our seats every other person take your seat take your seat oh take your seat wow what a crowd what a crowd at the center of it all it's you that I see. It's you that I see. At the center of it all. At the center of it all. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. Sir, can you, can you, who is taking the testimony? It's you that I see. Papa, there's a oh, testimony here, sir. Oh, there is power in your name, power in your name. Continue examining others. Miracle happens in your name. Miracles happen in your name. 
As you lift your voice to say, as you lift your voice to say, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. Oh, 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 oh. way maker, in the cool, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Daddy, this man here, I will go through pain in his ribs. Since last year, he has gone to hospital several times, but while you are ministering, the pain is no more in the ribs. The rib gone. pain is gone. Rib, yes, Come. Where was it? But I noticed my pain. What part? On the side of my ribs. Both ribs. Back. Both yes, ribs both to ribs. the back. Yes, sir. What happened now? now I just felt it. Was, I was feeling it sharp, and while you were praying, it just disappeared. Sir. It disappeared. Yes, sir. You can't feel it anymore. I can't feel it anymore, sir. Don't cry. Don't cry. It is gone forever. <laughs> it is gone forever. As she said. She's been experiencing a moving sensation in her right eyes for the past one month. And that led to oh. her not seeing properly. She She's, wasn't seeing properly. Yes, sir. But while you were praying, oh, you she just felt that something left her right eye. She could see properly with it right now, sir. The right eye. Yes, sir. The right eye, sir. But now, it's okay. You can see clearly now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Papa, there's a miracle here. Jesus. He was having a terrible cough when he came. But after these prayers, he said the cough disappeared and he could not raise his hand up. But right now, he could raise his hand. Come. Papa, Jesus, come I worship you today. Jesus, come This is Mr. King's. I bow before your throne. From River State, Mr. King's. He said he's been experiencing a hotness sensation under his lower abdomen for a long time. But while you were praying, he said to a Come. point, he threw up today. He but threw up. He threw up today. But while you were praying, he discovered coldness there and the pain disappeared. Now it's gone. Now it's gone to the glory of God. Where are you from? River State. River State, Port Harcourt. God will perfect everything that concerns you. Touch him, Lord. That this man here Jesus. had glaucoma since January this year. Glaucoma. He could not, yes, that. So he could not see well. But now, while you are praying, something fell off your eyes. You could see very well now. Come. Something fell off your eyes. Yes, that. Since when? It started fully since January this year, sir. I couldn't be able to read. I can't do anything with it. In fact, I told my resident pastor here. You know that I, I need a prayer. That is why I came for. I've been here for almost two weeks now. Two weeks. Yes, sir. And now, I went with praying. I saw something like cobwebs just fell out of my something eyes. Something like cobwebs. Yes, sir. Fell out of your eyes. Yes, sir. Father, his sight, his finances, his life, everything about him, I ask for a turnaround, yes. a mighty change. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Papa, Papa there's a testimony here. This is Mr. Chukwemeka from Enugu branch. He's been suffering from cough for the past two years. He said, but while you were praying, he discovered the cough ceased and he could breathe normal now. Let him come. Cease. Father, it's permanent. You are totally free in Jesus. Papa, there's a miracle here. This old man said he had memory loss in three years. He said when he came here, he was still losing strength. But after your prayer, he got in seven. He got a miracle. Come. All that the enemy has taken from you, be restored in Jesus' name. Papa has been Jesus. suffering for pain for the past five months. He said he has been to the hospital. Wherever you are, just lift your hands. I keep examining people, don't just stay with one person. Mighty warrior, great Jehovah. Jehovah. Mighty warrior. 
gloria Tell me. Papa, there's a testimony. Just give me some outstanding ones. Yes, sir. He said for a long time he could turn. Pastors, I'll pray for all of them, but just he give me some outstanding ones. He could turn his neck for a long time. But while you were praying, he discovered the stiff neck is now free and he could Come. turn the neck. Mighty warrior. Breathe him back. That she has been on drugs. For the past two weeks, she could not turn her neck. Her neck had always been stiffed. But now, while you are praying, come, come. she got healed. She couldn't turn her neck. You couldn't turn her neck. For the past two weeks, she has been on drugs. You said what? what? I've been taking drugs. You've been keeping your head straight. I've been keeping my head straight inside the vehicle from Aquaibum till here this night. I know you. Yes. We Where's your husband? Arrived. He's there in the crowd. So you'll be keeping your head straight. My head has been straight. Everyone in the car notice it. Okay, move the head now. Glory in battle, Father. Thanks, thanks. Jehovah. Papa, there is a miracle here. He said he came here with pie problem. So when you were praying, he felt something dropped in, in his body. And immediately the pain dropped. dropped. Yes, sir. The pile dropped. Yes, sir. Come. You want to say something? More than two years. Yes, sir. Put the mic. I saw something drop into my trouser. Something dropped into your trouser. Just drop it into my. I was looking back. You were looking back for it. Whether well, it's something, I could not see, but I'm okay now. That is a miracle here. Be it unto me according to your word. Tell me. He said, I don't know how to say, he said it's private parts. That there's something that's always moving there. And so, but while you were praying, you felt like some eyes came on him cold. Everything is okay now. Right there. The prayers that the Come. Prayer. Shine upon my heart the truth that sets me free according to your words. So be done to. For over 10 years, he can't explain what happens to him. See his legs. Are. What is this? He keeps eating the legs. He said, but while you were praying for the past 10 years, he could not stand normal. He always eats he, the he legs. He scratched, he eats. Yes, sir. See the legs. Are. But while you were praying, he discovered that the eating in the leg ceased and he's normal. Today. For how long? For 10 years. This is, this is terrible. Come. Where are you from, sir? Ebele. Ebele branch. And this has been on for 10 years. So you scratch, you itch. If the camera could zoom in, then you'll see that this is... The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You're free. You're permanently free. Clap your hands. Mm -hmm. That is a miracle here, Daddy. This man had partial paralysis on his right side, from the head downward. He could not move his hand, his leg, or anything. But while you were praying, he felt a heat, a sensation, and now Come. he's made whole. Come. Come, sir. What part were you feeling it? And even while you were ministering, I began to feel it on the left. Why the, uh, the uh, message came? And then you prayed. I felt this whole sensation around my head, the heat, some kind of sweat. Then everything just disappeared. After you felt the heat, the heat from, every, this, from your head, from my head here. you felt that heat. This, yes, sir. Can you describe the heat? It was like uh, a cancer. That's the heat. Pick him up. 
Father, grace upon his life. Great grace. Great empowerment. Papa, there's a testimony here. I love. He is from Liberia. He said right from when he was young in school days, he broke his spinal cord and the doctor said to him, there is nothing he can do even after the operation. I think I said something about yes, that. Yes, sir. He said, why you just mention it? He felt a sharp pain on the spinal cord. What he couldn't do before. He said he could not bend. He saw himself bending and there is no... Clap problem. your hands, clap your hands. Thank you, my father. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Papa, sir. The young man came here. He said he had heart burn for the past seven years. And he could not bend. Come, sir. But when you prayed, you got a miracle. Father, thank you for him. Thank you. Thank you. For healing him. For the victory you've given him. Touch. Touch. Papa, there's a testimony here. He says since 2014, he's been suffering from a dry fluid cutter. At okay. each time it comes, one side of him will be paralyzed, and he finds it difficult to see and to comprehend well. Come. But while you were praying, he felt something left him, and he could see, and he's okay to the glory of God. For how long? Since 2014. 2014. Your pastor. Pastor who? MC Ben. What is boy's pastor MC Ben? What branch is that? Enugoku. You know about it? He has complained about it to you? Several. It will never return. It will never return. Now there's a miracle here. This one for the past three months could not bend her waist. While you are praying, something left her and now she can bend her waist up and down. Come. Where are you from? Kurumi. By that name of sickness is bound. Demons tremble. That is all. There is a miracle here. Sound of that this man said he could not raise his right hand. It is not for the past and for the past five years now. But Come. when you prayed, he said it power of God fell on him. Now he can raise his hand up. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Papa, there's a testimony here. He came from Patani. He said for the past two years, he's been suffering from a cobweb. Can I lay my hands on you, people? Can I lay hands on you? Hold on on that. No, stand, stand. Come. It's permanent. It's permanent. I need ushers around. It's permanent. It's permanent. It's permanent. It's permanent. It's permanent. It's permanent. Take this out. We we will rise in your name. Adonai, you reign on high. We will rise. We will rise in your name. In your name. Yeah. 